Well, first of all, welcome back, of course, to TIFF. Yeah. It wouldn't be TIFF without you, so thank you for keeping us happy. Um, it wouldn't be me without TIFF. I mean, it's been a huge part of my life. Well, really. yes, yeah, yeah, of I, course. Yeah. Um, Adam, I don't know what to say. This one, I'll be you know, frank with you, with me. It, I just was uncomfortable the entire time. That's a good thing, I think, that it was easy. Well, it's, uh, you're not sure how far it's going to go, and uh, you're not quite sure uh, how dangerous it can get, and then it gets dangerous. So it's just, uh, it was essential to the movie to kind of give you that sense of edge. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's I, you know, I get uncomfortable when people call it a thriller, because I think that only kind of happens like later on in the film, but, it's, but there's a, a real sense that people are, are not aware of what they're playing with, you know, and how that's going to, what that's going to result in, you know. I think it's a, it, you know, and uh, I think Julianne Moore plays this woman who's very controlling and thinks that she's able to, you know, have a handle on these places that she's going to, but then realizes that it, she doesn't. And yeah. so. Yeah, but don't we all feel like that? Uh, um, can you talk to your uh, organ? Yeah, Thank sure. You. Sorry about that. Um, I think we all can kind of relate, as, especially as we get older. Yeah, well, it's this idea of, um, you know, being in a marriage and trying to uh, keep alive what was there at the beginning. I mean, it's, it's sort of a daunting task, you know, and so uh, it's a lot of work, and she thinks she's found a way to do that. Um, I mean, she's also full of all these anxieties about herself and, you know, sh so she's found a surrogate to kind of make love with her husband through her control. So it's a very edgy premise, you know, and, and it's bound to end up in a way that she, you know, wouldn't have expected. But she's also intoxicated by it. I mean, it's because it gives you a tremendous sense of power. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, first, I, you know, I want to ask you, because this is the first film, like, in 13 of your films that you haven't written. Like, yeah. what was that like for you? Uh, it, it was it was really fun. It, it, it was uh, liberating. It didn't feel as lonely. I, I didn't feel like I was the only person who had the whole film in my mind. Uh, I didn't feel like uh, I was still writing it as I was shooting it. Um, because I think that when I'm doing my own films, I'm not quite sure where the scenes are going to fit in sometimes and how it's going to all shape. But in this one, it's pretty clear. It's like it moves from this place to that place. And then you can concentrate on... On the, on, on the locations and the framing and uh, above all the performances. Like, how are you going to photograph and extract from these amazing actors all the nuance that they're capable of giving, you know, and, 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 and to explore all the places that this amazing story can go. Yeah, and then, and then you get this brilliant cast. I mean, I don't think you could have gotten three better lead actors, and even, even Max, like even... Yeah. even young boy, he, he's fantastic too, yeah. but I really want to pinpoint Amanda because, you know, here's a girl, we've seen her on Big Love, we've seen her on, but she comes off Mamma Mia, the happiest movie, you know, you think you can come from, and then she goes to this deep, dark place. I mean, how did you know she'd be perfect? Well, uh, we knew her long before Mamma Mia. I had this script two years ago, and we started auditioning, and it was like a total open audition. We saw all these young actresses, and she walked in, and she was just exceptional. Like, she's just amazing. She has this incredible... Um, aura around her. She's like very vulnerable and kind of insecure and yet there's a there's a kind of a, a wisdom to her and there's something very uh, compelling about her. So we knew that she was it but at the time she wasn't a star and so <coughs> we couldn't finance a film around her and, and then I, I went off and made Adoration and then by the time I was through with that uh, Mamma Mia had come out which was a huge international hit and then I had a, this amazing opportunity to work with Liam Neeson in a play mm -hmm. in New York, so we got to know each other. And uh, uh, he took on a part that he might have not been that excited about originally, but it, you know, suddenly he was, and Taken came out. So, and then and then Julianne Moore was on board. And so, you know, it, filmmaking is very very strange because you're not in control of these things. Like right. when schedules line up, people's tastes. Uh, I mean, you're trying to draw people in. That's my job, is to meet them and yeah. make them think it's the most exciting project in the world. What I'm not good at as a director, and some people are, is telling them why it would be important for their career. I, some people can do that. I have never, I mean, who am I to tell well. Liam Neeson or Julianne Moore what's good for their career? But some directors do pull that. For me, it's just about the role, it about the character, you know, like, and, and, and what an amazing process it will be to explore this. And putting Amanda at ease. I mean, you know, young girl, and she had a lot to do here, yeah. not just, you know, mentally, but physically. Yeah. I mean, how did you keep her at ease about that? By rooting it in the psych 
psychology of the piece like what about this character like always bringing back to the character and and just you know working really carefully with her watching her you know that's my you know i have to be fascinated by the people i'm shooting so i'm just like watching them and i'm locked into what they're doing and and she never fails to you know surprise and you know um, i think that that's and and you make sure that they know that they, they they're going to look great you know you know yeah she did oh my god yeah. she's stunning stunning really oh everybody looks so great in this one um you know it's funny i was saying to julian earlier you know we've been uh, look most of us with i've been talking to this morning we've been with our partners for you know i've been married 20 22 years this year like holy mackerel where'd that all go you know and do you find like as you grow with your partner like you you should trust them more but maybe we don't i don't know why does that happen <laughs> it's probably because we know what's going on inside our heads right <laughs> You know, so we kind of go, well, if what's going on inside my head is going on inside their head, and I know them pretty well, then, I mean, I, I, and I think it's about communication, and yeah. it's about sort of like being able to actually talk about that, you know, as opposed to just like, let's not go there at all. Let's not even talk about the fact that, you know, um, we are thinking of other things in our life, and we're not the same people that we were. I mean, that's a huge thing. Yeah. I mean, when you start a relationship in your early 20s, yeah. I mean, you're not the same person. That's right, and you have so, kids now. And yeah, yeah, so... Um, and sometimes communication isn't just enough because communication can get really boring as well. So I think for an erotic life, you need something that's kind of a little dangerous. Yeah. So you hire a prostitute to flirt with your partner. <laughs> that's you know, what I do. I, I mean, it's, uh, it's great to make a movie about it. You know, seriously, <laughs> now you've given me an idea. Why not? You know, hey, what the heck? It takes I the just, pressure yeah, off of me. Like, yeah, yeah, I think you just always hire other people to do the work, you know, I think. <laughs> it's always good.